<clears throat> Hello everyone. Alright, so I was doing some critiques on DeviantArt for some people's artwork and one thing I noticed was a lot of people use the blur tool to blend colors in their drawings or paintings and that works um, especially for some styles the using the blur tool is really good um, just because they want that perfect blend of color however in paintings more realistic ones it's usually better to avoid the blur tool unless you're doing trying to do some special effect like a glow or something mainly because the skin has a lot of texture and this is from pores from hairs anything that can light can bounce off of and there's a lot of it on the skin there's we're nasty all right come on admit it so if you don't if you aren't looking for a more realistic more textured style then obviously this may not be the place for you so you are welcome to leave and go to any other tutorial I certainly don't own the internet so you can do what you want it's art it's you want the style you want um, I do recommend experimenting with it just so you can it's a really awesome way to mess around with the tools and paint tool side so if you're new to this program I definitely recommend messing around with different styles because there are some really cool things you can do and I know I certainly have not tried nearly enough things with this program. So first things first, I've tried to set myself up for success. I've already recorded one of these tutorials and it was pretty bad. So um, basically if you're going for the less realistic style, um, then it's really easy to do shading. All you really need to do is just lay down a base layer. I'm not going to make this a whole, a whole coloring tutorial, but I mean, all you really do is you put down the base color, pick a darker color, bam. and then I'm using brush, so this is probably really dark. My Cintiq shows colors really weird. Apparently it has a super advanced screen, so yay for me, but it makes everything look really different. So these colors probably look crazy for you guys, and I'm sorry for that. So this would be an instance when it's cool to use the blur tool because it's not a super huge area, it's actually a pretty small area. And if you want to have this nice shading, you know, you want these colors, but you want it to be more subtle shading. You just put the blur tool across it. Where it's more harsher, maybe a more harsh shadow, you can keep it straight. Whatever. It all works. It's all good. Like I said, it really depends on the style that you want. Um, I'm going to give her some hair so she's not bald. Ooh. That won't even shade the hair because that's its own, its own animal. Really it is. So, I mean, there you have some shading right there. Bing. So that was easy enough. Um, that's when I personally recommend using the blur tool is when you're either going for this style or like I said, if you're adding effects to um, a, a picture or, well, a painting, anything. Um, and you want like a glow or something, it's really good for that. Now, I put this black here, honestly, I'm just kind of rolling with this, I don't really know what I'm doing. Um, I'm just kind of messing around, I'm not really good at these sorts of things, I prefer showing people stuff hands on, like in person. Obviously this is the internet, we can't do that. So, if you, I start off, if you haven't used the brush tool before, that's the tool I really like to use. Um, there are plenty of other ones that work. But using the brush tool and any other tool, there's a blending option, and that's what I'm just kind of messing with right now. And you can have it for anywhere from 0 to 100. And this is it at 0. You can blend. I'm just putting this in circular motion, and it shows up really well. Um, it may take a, some moving back and forth to get it at a hundred percent the color you want it to be but it really easily shows up at a hundred percent I'm moving the brush around and nothing is showing up it's not really carrying any blue in. it's all black see 
even if I carry it over to the white, it's still black. It's lightening it up a little bit, but not very much. And then of course, we'll put a nice ooh, halfway, 50%, and that's when you can really, it really depends more on how much pressure you're putting on. And of course, once you've already painted over, like now that this has blue on it, now it's going to be easier to carry the blue in other spots. Um, now, for blending, obviously that in itself was just blending. Um, Paint Tool Sci, uh, there are some programs, and I know I used to have a Mac and I had a painting program that was extremely difficult to blend in because the pressure sensitivity was more about the size of the brush and it didn't actually, that pressure sensitivity didn't affect how thick, I guess you could say, the color was laid down. Paint Tool Sci, it's really easy to blend because it, it just, pressure affects everything. Um, so I have my minimum size, as you can see right here. Um, I'll set it to 100%, so the minimum size is the maximum size of the brush. So pressure right now is solely affecting the si or the amount of color if that makes any sense. I know I'm saying that wording that really weird um, but in this case it's a perfect example of the amount of pressure you put down is how much color gets set down and just keep moving it back and forth and the more the colors will blend and blend and blend and blend. Um, so that right there and the reason I prefer using the brushes you can see especially especially right here you can see where spots different opacity in different parts and that's where texture really comes into play is um, now there are different things you can do for texture you can duplicate the layer add noise and I know this is probably getting too in depth um, and that'll like you can add different effects to it and that'll give it some texture um, you can also use some people will if they're painting a really large painting or doing something super in depth, they'll actually take a uh, the brush and they'll do white and they'll just kind of add spots. That's at zero percent blending, but they'll add spots. This is obviously a bad example. Uh, I'm going to use the blur tool just to kind of blend it in more. And this one, it's a good idea to use the blend tool, but they kind of add that texture in that way. Uh, let's see if I can. More. Okay, so now, see, this is, let's say, if I had a scaly creature, it's not entirely scaly, but let me go up this size a little bit. But just move to simple circle. I have a shaped brush right now, so it kind of has its own texture. But there you go. Um, just these different brushes I mean it really gives you a different style and I think a lot of people when they get stuck on using the blur tool to blend colors and I'm not saying this about everyone I feel like I'm gonna get attacked by someone who's a huge supporter of the blur tool <laughs> it's really not that bad of a tool I don't hate it that much but um, I think a lot of people focus so much on it and they kind of forget how much fun you can have and how much detail you can add um, just simply with coloring with different tools and using the texture of the brushes. Um, you can get a lot of detail out of line art, but really um, the coloring and the shading and the lighting is really going to give the best effects. Um, so I think I'll keep it at that. I don't want to get too in depth and I don't want to talk your ears off. I know this is a really long video already, but I really hope you guys liked it. Uh, I hope it helped. That's me smiling since you can't see me. Oh, and now I'm a son. But anyways, if you need anything else, um, if I kind of babbled too much and didn't make enough sense about something, just let me know and I will try making another tutorial and hopefully a shorter one. Um, but unlike some people who just kind of make speed video like videos at super fast forward and just kind of add text. I wanted to actually explain it so you guys could kind of 
understand why it's a good idea to just mess around with text like with textured brushes um, they aren't always there's paint tool Sai has some default brushes that have texture but chances are if you want one that's really nice you're gonna have to download it um, the one I'm using let's see this one I may as well give her credit that's always a good idea um, but this brush that's huge this brush, uh, I don't know who made it. I will try to find a link, and as soon as I find it, I'll put it in the video description. Um, but yeah, just downloading brushes, you can make your own. And all of those, it's just like painting with regular paints um, traditionally. Is different brushes have different uses, and you just have to come up with ways that you want to use them so that you can paint how you want to paint and you can get the look that you want. Um, so like the millionth time saying I think I'm done so have an awesome day uh, good luck with painting don't ever give up don't ever stop what you're doing just keep experimenting keep trying new things um, and that's it so have fun